Chiefs, thank you for being here today. I know your time is important, so I'll keep my comments as brief as possible. As you know, uh, we received information last night that the city is at risk, and as mayor, uh, I intend to do something about it. Uh, I cannot really speak to how Smallville got into this situation. I've only been mayor for a few months. Uh, and at my urging, I've asked all the department heads to come to the council and give an update on their areas of responsibility. And that's what Police Chief Gunzel Blazon did last night. If you have questions about the past, uh, ask uh, the other four members of the council or ask my predecessor, Seymour Butts. Uh, what uh, you know how we got in this situation because they would know more about it than I do uh, they can explain how we got here if you want to know about the future well that's why we're here today two options are on the table to address a patrol car shortage uh, one is use aging vehicles which I don't really think is an option and the second is to sell vacant land and property that the city owns which um, is a good option, but uh, I don't know that it. I don't know that it answers the answers what we need to do. Today, I want to put a third option out there, uh, even though it's. I know it's going to be painful, but we have to raise some money. And we have to raise it quickly, and I don't think a land auction is the way to do that. So today, uh, I'm proposing a temporary tax increase. Either a property tax increase that would boost the annual bill on a $250,000 home, about $50 a year, or on a 50 employee business, about $100 a year. That would be one uh, tax increase you could do. Or we could do a sales tax increase of one to two cents on retail goods and groceries that are sold in the city, okay? <clears throat> I know this won't be popular, one tax hits homeowners who are and businesses who already have a ta heavy tax burden. The other tax hits those who can afford it the least, are poor, and hits them disproportionately hard. Uh, but if we approve these right away, we would have enough money in less than a year uh, to uh, buy at least five new cars. Chief says we need five cars at least on the streets at all times, so we could buy at least five new cars within a year. And by the way, those cars go for about $35,000 fully equipped. Um, so here's where I need your help. I hope that you can, through your viewers and your readers, that you can contact them with polls or surveys or through your social media uh, availability and ask their opinions on which option they prefer. Because we're gonna do the same thing here at City Hall. We're gonna use our social media platforms and ask them to contact us and ask and tell us which of the three options they prefer. They can also call me directly at 222-2222. Time is of the essence, so I'll be calling an emergency meeting of the city council for next Wednesday. And uh, by that time, we will have gathered all the responses that we've gotten at City Hall. I hope that you will have gathered all of your responses and we'll try to contact you individually and, and, and I'm sure in print and in media and in broadcast and dig digitally, you'll say how your readers and viewers responded. So we'll take all of those responses, gather them up and we'll, and we'll use that and try to decide what to do by next Wednesday, what option seems to be the one going forward. Um, I thank you all for your time today and now I'll take a few questions. Yes. Well, what are we going to do until the money is raised? The police are going to do the outstanding job that they're doing already. Sometimes they're having to ride two to a car. Sometimes they're riding one to a car. Sometimes they're just on foot right now, covering as much uh, uh, of the territory as they possibly can. But this is an outstanding police force. They've done an outstanding job to this point, and I know they'll continue to do that. That's why we need to act as quickly as we possibly can. Yes. Are there currently any reports of increased crime due to the lack of patrolling? We've not heard of any of any uh, crime increase or of anybody you know not getting a response from the police. But certainly, if your readers or viewers have heard that, I want to know, and I want to know that directly at my line two 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 twenty two twenty two, and uh, you can contact me at any time. I can tell you about response times, however. I'm glad you asked that question. Response times generally in the past have been an average of about five minutes. You call 911 and within the city of Smallville, 
we've been able to respond within about five minutes, seven minutes at the outside. In the past couple of months, as the shortage has taken hold, we've, signed, we've seen response times rise to 10 minutes and as high as 15 minutes. That's unacceptable for a city our size. And so that's why we need another reason why we need to act quickly. Yes. Well, what would the tax increase percentage be for um, sales tax and for property tax? We're still working out the percentages, but I can tell you that the that the that the sales tax that we're proposing would be one cent or two cents on the dollar. And uh, so that would be retail goods and groceries sold in uh, within the city limits. Now, groceries really hit the poor even more uh, disproportionately hard than just a, a basic retail tax would. So if the voters tell us do a, do a sales tax with retail goods and exclude groceries, that's what we'll do, but we're putting it all on the table right now. The percentage on the property tax increase, I don't know that the accountants are still working that out, but I can tell you that the one that we're proposing would say for an average $250,000 home here in Smallville, the annual tax bill would go up about $50 a year. And for a, an employee business, a small business of say, well actually it'd be a, a larger business of around 50 employees or, or more, the, uh, the property tax bill that they pay would be $100, another $100 a year. They already bear a pretty heavy tax burden, but we just think this is the quickest, best way to go about it. But I'm just putting these proposals on the table. I know this is not popular. But we've got three on the table that have varying degrees of success, and uh, I just thought it was my responsibility as mayor, that's Mayor Mac Cheese, uh, to, do it, to do it this way as well. How long do you anticipate it taking to raise the funds, and once you do, will the property tax and sales tax be stopped? Absolutely, they are temporary. They are temporary. And uh, my hope is, as I, the uh, example I used was, in about a year, we could raise enough to to fully equip five new cars. If we wanted to replace all 11, you know, do the math. But I, I'm hopeful that these that these temporary tax increases would be being over for no longer than a year. Other questions from the room of journalists? Hint, hint. Yes. What goes into fully equipping a car? Why is it thirty-five thousand dollars? Man, that, that that's another good question. But they, if you think about a fully equipped car, they are separated by you know a, a protective wall, usually of metal. Uh, they have advanced electronics. They have advanced high performance high performance engines. They have advanced high performance tires. Everything about them is top of the line, so that they can, when they're pressed into duty they can do what the officers need for them to do. And uh, the prices that we're getting now are anywhere from $33,000 to $35,000 for a fully equipped police car. And those are new? Those are new. Yes. For our poll, do you want us to ask our viewers uh, which tax increase they would prefer or which option they would prefer as well? Well, if you can do it, which option and which and which tax increase both, because that's the way we're going to do it, is we're going to put the three options on the table and we're going to point out that one of these options has two parts to it, and you can favor this part or this part. What's well, a timetable? Like, how long do you want this this polling period to go for? Well, as I said, today the we got the news last night on Wednesday. Today is Thursday. I'm going to call an emergency meeting of the city council for next Wednesday. So by that time, we're going to gather all the information that we can. You know, ideally, we'd like to have more time than that, but I just want to give us a self-imposed deadline because I think it's important that we move and move quickly on this. Uh, I don't know how the rest of the council feels about this, but as, as mayor, I'm going, to, I'm going to call this special session. If there are arguments to that, we'll address those as they come up, but I just think yeah, we've, we've waited long enough collectively as a community and this problem has just gotten worse and worse and worse and it sort of slapped us in the face last night. I think it's time uh, that we get past inaction and toward action, no matter how painful that might be. And as mayor, that's what I'm proposing uh, today. Other questions? <coughs> I've got a whole list of things here to talk about. Anticipating some questions. A 
I'll tell you what, uh, I have uh, an, an important incoming call, so I'm going to take a five minute break and then we'll resume the press conference. This is unprecedented. This is so important for Smallville. We'll take a five minute break. Maybe you can review your notes <coughs> and then we'll come with some more questions. So we do have one more question over here. Uh, not as much, but police and fire tend to respond to the same things. Those are just the police times that I have. I'll have to check on those other times to see if we have that information available. Uh, we haven't had any shortage uh, in, in, of EMTs uh, that the fire department has told us about at this point. We'll certainly check on that. But as I said, I asked all department heads to come, in, come to the council and tell us what your needs are. Tell us what, what the status of your department is. And Guns of Blazin uh, was... Uh, very uh, did his job very well in telling us about this issue. Uh, he did that at his own peril because you know that's it, not a popular thing to do. But he thought it was in the community's interest that we get this out there and that we get this <laughs> and we address this issue. Yes. I know you said this wasn't really. This didn't start when you took over the office, but um, is there an explanation for maybe how the negligence was still going on even when you took over? Well, again, I've only been in office about just a little over a month, and you know that's I, so I've had I've had this is this was my second council meeting, and uh, I called on all the department heads to come forth and tell the council what's up, you know what's up with their departments and everything like that. I acted as quickly as I could. Sometimes the machinery of city hall moves a little slowly. People have to gather their information and then present. Uh, you know, I've had I've had six weeks or seven weeks to address this. My predecessors have had anywhere from two years to four years to address this. Is tax money already going to the maintenance of? Absolutely. A small bill is, 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 we're the size we are. You know, if we were a bigger city, if we had more property to tax, if we had more goods to come in, we could do that. But we're just stretched thin right now. We have so many things. We're building a lot of schools. We're building a lot. We're doing a lot of infrastructure work on our roads and bridges. So there's a lot of places for money to go right now. Good, a good portion of that goes to the operations of the police department, the operations of the fire department, and all of our other operations. It's just that this maintenance portion, if you will, of keeping vehicles up to date and making sure new ones are purchased, for whatever reason, has been has been allowed to lapse. And we're not going to allow it to lapse anymore. We're going to take action on it. So there's no indications of misuse of funds then? Not at this point. The auditors are looking at that. We just think, you know, we're, we're growing like other communities are. We're not growing at a great clip, but we're growing at a, at a nice, steady clip. And w there's a lot of things that people want to do. They want to fund parks. They want to fund recreation. <coughs> they want to fund roads and bridges. They want to fund a lot of things. They want to promote or uh, fund arts and entertainment that the city can provide and parks, as I mentioned. There's only so much money to go around, and right now we need it to go to the cars because we have a safety issue here. How do you think this increased tax is going to affect spending on local businesses? Ideally, I hope that people will say, you know, the more we spend, the, the, the better, you know, this money is going to a good cause. But there's only so much disposable income folks have. Uh, you know, one concern about the uh, sales tax is that it hits the poor disproportionately hard. There's only so much disposable income. If you're living below the poverty, poverty level, there's only so much income you have to put to groceries. That's, that's all you've got. And if the tax goes up on groceries, one or two cents on the dollar, where is that extra money going to come from? As we know, if we've looked at our paychecks, our raises are barely keeping uh, uh, up, up to date with the cost of living. And uh, so we're in a pinch here. And like I said, I know this is not going to be popular, but I think it's for a good cause. It is temporary. All the money will be directed toward going toward these vehicles and getting something done sooner than later. How many homeowners, how many businesses will this affect? Well, I did the, the homeowner, it'll affect all homeowners. But I did the 250 average because that's the average cost of a home in our community. So I did that, that out there. The businesses, it'll, it'll, it'll impact the businesses that have 50 employers or more. Those that are under the real small businesses in our community, not so much, because some of them will be hit on that sales tax end, you know, with people watching their pennies and 
we don't want to hit them with a double whammy of you know people maybe spending less money uh, because of the sales tax and then the business owner having to pay something else aside so we just wanted to give one one thing or the other let me go here first and then come back. Um, what will be, um, how are the people who are responsible for neglecting this problem going to, like, take responsibility for it? That's up to the voters. Uh, I'm not trying to throw anybody up on, under the bus, but I'm the mayor now, and this is my problem, and I'll take this problem, and I'm going to try to do something about it. I'm just saying, it, it's, it's all, you know, I ran on a record of making Smallville more accountable and making sit the city council more accountable, and this is the first step in that process. Uh, all I can say is this is where we are. Uh, my predecessors can address this, but I just assume not hang in the past. Let's move to the future and see what we can do about this problem and get it addressed. Yes. Are jobs on the line because of past negligence? Not at this point. I mean, we're, we'll have to see what comes of these options. If if there if one of these options doesn't uh, fly, like I said, I don't think using the aging vehicles is much of an option. But it's out there. And if the voters tell us that's what they want to do, we'll try to find a way to make that work. But I would be very against that. Uh, but the other two options um, will raise will raise enough money that I think that we can address this and, and go from there. Can you re re repeat the last part of your question? Are there any jobs that are going to be in question? Oh, the, the hope is is that by raising this money and funneling it toward the cars and toward the new cars, we won't we won't have to do that. But if the voters say we're not crazy about the aging vehicles, we're not crazy about a tax option, we're not crazy about the land uh, auction because we don't think it'll it'll do any good, uh, then we would then we would have to look at, at revenue and spending in other areas and make some cuts that would be pretty painful. Maybe doing without park maintenance. Maybe doing without some things. You know, maybe some of the road stuff that we that we've already agreed to do. Some of those things will be back on the table. We're trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid that. Does that help? Or that part of the question? Well, the people that maybe who've been responsible for ne neglecting this issue are are the, is their job security being brought into into question? Not as such. I mean, if you if one of our one of our council. Uh, members was quoted as saying this is not a new problem we've heard about this before and we I assumed met the council so that tells me that police chief uh, Blazon had brought this to the council's attention before but for whatever reason over time there has been neglect or no action so he once again at my urging he brought it to the council's attention and now we will address it so certainly I don't think he's at at risk here or at fault, uh, what the voters want to do with the rest of the people on the council is completely up to them. Um, with the four, you know, they already have pretty low autonomous income, pretty low disposable income. Isn't taxing them heavily a safety issue in itself? I don't know whether it's a safety issue. I guess we could argue that point uh, on and on. I don't think it's a safety issue, but it's certainly a burden issue. Don't do this lightly. But uh, if we don't keep our people safe from crime, if we don't keep our response times at, a, at an acceptable average, uh, that affects everybody across the board, regardless of your income level. And so I'm just trying to address the biggest need and the, the biggest amount of people uh, in the quickest way possible. Good question. Yes. Do you have any statistical data regarding the type of crimes that? are most often to? We can gather that data for you. I'll, I'll, I'll ask the police chief to gather that data for you. Yes? Do you think that taxing um, sales tax in the city will drive um, Smallville customers to go to other cities to buy their goods? It could. There's always that. There's always that that problem uh, you know in the city of Chicago for instance tobacco is taxed very very high as we know and that's driven a lot of people in Chicago to come to outlying areas such as Smallville and other places to buy their tobacco so you know we've seen real life examples of how that works my hope is is if we're talking about one or two cents on the dollar uh, for groceries and retail goods that that, that isn't an overbearing amount of money 
and my hope is is that if, if, if voters will kick look, look uh, step back and see why this is so important to Smallville and to the future of Smallville that they'll accept that and and won't go elsewhere to do their business but certainly that's a prerogative this is a temporary fix for five new cars. What um, is your plan if one of those five cars fails, if five need to be on the road? One of the new cars? Yeah. Uh, we would hope that in buying new cars that we won't have that issue. Most of the cars we're talking about now that are at the city garage are almost 10 years old. So, you know, if they go through a lot of wear and tear in 10 years, we would hope that new cars on the road would not go through that same wear and tear. And obviously this is a temporary fix, so we're going to have to look at other things to go back to the uh, question about job cuts and, and things like that. I don't want to be about uh, going, going about it where we're cutting jobs, but is there a chance that we're spending some money elsewhere that we should be, should be spending on police car maintenance and upkeep? Maybe there are, but those questions will take a little bit longer to solve. And my worry is, is that if we establish a committee to figure out that answer that, that, to that question, that will delay, 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 and that we'll be here a year from now asking ourselves what are we going to do and we can't, just can't afford to wait that long. Yes? Um, following her question, what's your plan if one of the working cars breaks down now? If one of the three working cars breaks down now, um, the plan will be to make good with what we have. We're trying to repair those six cars in the garage as quickly as possible and we'll get them back on the road, but they're 10 years old. They all have well more than 100,000 miles on them. Some of them I found out have almost 200,000 miles on them. Uh, how long they'll last even after they're fixed and repaired, I don't know. That's why we've got to act on getting these new cars in the rotation so we can get the new cars in the rotation, depend heavily on them and less heavily on the older cars my hope is, is that that mix will see us through this, this crisis that we're facing. Where are the funds coming from to repair those cars right now? There's a maintenance budget in place to, to get some of those repairs done. Um, my worry is, and the chief's worry is that, you know, if we fix the old, we fix the, the door supply up and we fix the accelerator pedals that, that go bad, what goes bad next? You know, that's our worry with those with cars those old. The bottom line is we need money now get those cars replaced and we need we're gonna need more money some down somewhere down the road to get all eleven as new as possible. How much is the maintenance budget? I'll have to look that up. I don't have that money uh, right here at hand. I'm still the city budget is quite large and I'm still going through the process of seeing how much is spent where. So but we'll get that information to you as quickly as we can. Yes. Um, although you said that this is a temporary fix, have you like made any long-term plans as to how this will like keep being upkept in the future with like the new cars? Yeah, as, as I mentioned a second ago, we're going to have to address this. You know, it's it'll be good to have this inflow of money if we get it either from selling vacant land or from one of these tax options. It'll be great to have that money, but it doesn't solve the long-term issue of of are our spending priorities right? But trying to decide whether our spending priorities are right is gonna take some time. I mean, some real time of digging into the budget, see how much we spend on this, how much we spend on that, how much we spend on ABC. And I'm hopeful that when we hear from the public that they'll say, we think safety is a huge issue and we think you should do this. But if the public responds in such a way that they say that <coughs> safety is not a big issue, We'll, we'll go down that road as well. I'm, 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 I think and I, I bet money that people think safety is a big issue. Uh, if they don't, I'd be very surprised. Yes? Is borrowing the money or cars from a neighboring town an option? Have you considered? A lot of the towns our size are facing similar issues, you know, growing at a, at a fairly steady pace. Uh, crime also grows at a very steady pace, unfortunately, and so they're facing some of the same problems that we are, and we just worry that borrowing and, um, and begging, if you will, doesn't address the real problem. Uh, we, we need to be spending more money on police, squad car, upkeep, maintenance, and purchasing. 
How we do that in the long term, I'm not sure, but in the short term, I've got this. I've got this proposal that is on the table now as of today. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if you talked about it, but what was the original issue with selling the lots? Instead? It's just going to take a while. Uh, a land auction. Uh, the, first of all, all the property will have to be appraised. Then after it's appraised, the auction would have to be set up. Then the process would have to, you know, we'd have to get, go through the auction or just outright sale. I'm told by our accountants that that's a, a labor-intensive process, but more importantly, a time-intensive process. Now, uh, I've been told that if we do this, one of these tax proposals, vote on it in a week from now and try to get it in place, uh, that the voters agree that we can do this, uh, that we can have this on the table and, and, and rolling within a matter of weeks or, 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 or less than that. The land auction, I don't have as good a feel for that and I just don't, I just don't know even how much money that might raise. It's four properties. There may be more properties we'd have to put in and that would require more appraisals. You know, who knows? How long? Which uh, which the land I, I I just don't know. I'm just told by our accountants that it's it's a time intensive process, and I've been told by them that if we go by the route of the tax proposal, even though it may be less popular, that that might be our quickest route. But we're gonna have to talk about that. All right, good questions. Any other questions? You know, you can always reach me and ask questions after the press conference. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one interviews. And uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate your attendance today and how much we need your help to get this solved. Uh, your, plat your social media platforms can really be helpful to us with your polls and your surveys. So the sooner you can get those out there, the better off for us, the better off for the city. We appreciate your role. We appreciate everything you do. Thank you.